What's the day-to-day -day garrison life of an active duty soldier in a field unit? Let's have a conversation. Hi, I'm Kylie, just another Army vet. I enlisted in the Army as a medic in the early 2000s, and I just recently medically retired. So we're here today to talk about what garrison life is like for a typical enlisted soldier in a field unit. Now typically I like to have videos where I am standing and I am just giving you point by point by point and it's a very structured video. However, because this is a new channel, I thought we could try to switch it up a little bit and actually just have more of a sit down and conversational video. And all the topics that I talk about, I'll be referencing in my notebook. And almost everything I can talk about can actually be full videos on their own. So if I gloss over a subject that I talk about that you wanna see a full video on, then drop that in the comments. I appreciate any feedback and any ideas that you guys also have. So, your daily schedule, like the normal set structure of your day and your week, is almost gonna be exactly the same. You're gonna be having PT in the morning from approximately 06.30 until 7.30ish, and then you'll have an hour and a half for personal hygiene, and then you'll have work call at nine o'clock where you'll be working until about 11.30, 11.30 to 1300. That's when you're gonna have your lunch break. And then at uh, 1300, you're back at the company and you are working until generally 1700-ish. Again, it kind of depends. That, that's your typical day. And that's going to, that's gonna apply to pretty much every field unit that you are in. Now, the time of PT, that might change. Your work call could change a little bit. And lunch might not be an hour and a half. It might just be an hour. And if, honestly, that's just a typical day. If you're in the middle of a very busy day, like doing inventories or something, then you could easily just have a 30-minute or a 45-minute lunch. It, it, it'll just depend, really. Uh, let's have a look here. So generally, yeah, generally you will have PT five days a week, but in some units, if they're still doing sergeant's time, some units you're actually gonna be just having sergeant's time training in the morning. So you might have sergeant's time training from like 6.30 until 12 or something. It, honestly, that kind of depends on the unit. Most of my units have always been in, we've always had some sort of PT on Thursday mornings but sometimes a PT might be more like a warrior PT. So maybe carrying litters, which, which are stretchers, or maybe wearing your body armor and running a few miles. Just more, more PT that can be more fun, I guess. It just kind of, it depends on what your unit's doing. Again, not all units are gonna be doing sergeant time training or warrior PT, it just, this kind of depends. So again, sergeant's time training, uh, generally again is on Thursdays, and what it is, is just a time for NCOs in your unit to conduct MOS or job specific training, or training in the warrior skills. For example, like how to don an NBC mask, for example, it is, there's hundreds of tasks in, that you could be learning, essentially. Uh, yeah, if, if you're a medic, if you're in a medical unit, you might, like a Charlie Med or something, you might have the medics teaching about controlling bleeding or about tactical field care or IVs. It, it depends on what's going on that day. But typically, sergeant time training will be on the training schedule well in advance. So NCOs have time to prepare the lessons. And that typically happens on Thursday mornings. So every field unit is gonna have some sort of equipment such as vehicles and trailers and generators in their motor pool. And there is usually one week designated for motor pool operations. Typically, that's Monday. Motor pool Mondays, where at nine o'clock, it's typically, typically gonna be a battalion formation 
And after this formation, you go back to your individual companies and sections, and you have to then take your 5988s and PMCS your vehicles, your trailers, your generators, all that stuff. The You have NCOs who are there to help you, and you also have some mechanics who are around who can also answer questions and whatnot. You will have 5988s that you're filling out, and of course, they're going to want you to have your Dash 10 manual in your hands as you're filling out your paperwork. They want to make sure that you're going by the book, starting with number one and going all the way down the list and all the pages in this manual. Using a Dash 10 manual is the right way to complete a PMCS. Does everyone use Dash 10 manuals? No. Does everyone even have Dash 10 manuals for each individual piece of equipment? No. No. That's a whole other story. <laughs> Trying to make sure that you actually have your Dash 10s for each piece of equipment. Uh, so that's what Mondays are. Monday mornings, you could typically have your PMCS and 5988s completed, typically by lunchtime. But sometimes it can go longer until the afternoon. It, it just depends on how many people actually show up for Motor Pool Monday and how much equipment has to get PMCS, which typically should be everything every Monday. So one thing about being in field unit, that there's going to be a lot of details and duties that have to be done. You will have some reoccurring ones, such as headcount and CQ, staff duty. Then you'll have ones that you're just randomly tasked out to, such as post cleanup. And on Fort Stewart, there was something called the, the, the tree dedication detail, which is when soldiers were killed in third ID, they would have a tree dedicated to them. So they would have soldiers help set up the dedication site for the actual ceremony itself. So I mean, that, 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 was, that was a good detail to be on, you know, that was, had some meaning to it, which was nice. Uh, you also would have like a post cleanup, which would be you'd have a week of just riding around in a van with a work crew and you're going to be just cleaning up posts. Police call, picking up pineapples, just to make the garrison look nice. That's what that is. Then you'll have things such as head count at the defect and staff duty and CQ. You'd have CQ in the barracks, staff duty would be at your battalion level, battalion area or at brigade level. You would have uh, sergeant major detail. But essentially, you have a handful of junior enlisted soldiers have to report to the battalion area usually and the sergeant major just has a t some tasks to give them. Generally, it's kind of the same idea, picking up pine cones, police call, anything that the sergeant major needs manpower for in that general battalion area. That's typically what it consists of. Uh, let me see. So, so having when you when you have vehicles, you're considered to be an operator. So when the mechanics are doing maintenance on vehicles or fixing vehicles, they can sometimes call the company and ask for operators. What that means is that generally it's going to be a junior enlisted soldier, but anyone in your section can just go to the motor pool. Uh, generally, it need, you need to have a, a license, I believe. I'm not sure about that one. Maybe. If you know, drop that in the comments, because I'm not sure. But generally, I think you have to have your license for that particular piece of equipment, like a Humvee, for example, then you would have to go to the motor pool and just help the mechanics do some maintenance, like lubing some tires or tire rotation, whatever they want help with. So generally, you will have some quarterly training that has to happen, which would be like EO and Sharp, for example, and you will have to sit in a classroom with the rest of your company, you have to watch these death by PowerPoint presentations on these different topics. And again, this is a quarterly thing. It just has to be done, and just make sure that you sign your name on that sign-in sheet, that way you can get credit for being there. Uh, there's gonna be also some online training has to happen. It's usually yearly, but there's like a dozen, two dozen different courses you have to do, like cyber awareness, SEER, 
you know, sometimes they'll sometimes they'll have a a mass text message saying, "Hey, the following soldiers need to complete this, 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 and that," and or the entire company needs to go and update update that right now. And you know, there's only so many computers at the company, so you have to go to the library, you have to go to the education center, and you're looking for a computer to get this training done, and it's uh, it's not fun, but it's just one of those things you have to complete and you don't want to get in the red on that because that can be one of the things that they look at when you're trying to get a leave or a four-day weekend approved depending on the unit you have to submit a packet to go and leave and that could be one of the things that they check is hey have you completed your SEER or your cyber awareness is your med pros red it it depends on the unit really but it's a lot of it's a lot of training and classes and stuff um, there is a lot of meetings happening at the company. Typically, you're going to have at least two weekly meetings. There's a training meeting usually in the afternoons on maybe a Thursday or a Wednesday. And that's typically just some of the leaders of the company, like the training NCO maybe, uh, and the platoon sergeants, platoon leaders, XO, the company commander. They're all going to be there for the, these meetings. Typically, that's when the junior enlisted soldiers or the squad leaders are trying to get the company cleaned or just trying to take care of missions in the motor pool and stuff. That's typically when that happens. There's going to be a lot of different layouts and inventories of things. There's like cyclic inventories, monthly inventories, and when you do a chain of command that's just inventorying everything and doing hand receipts. It's a, it's a lot of things involved in that. But if you're not at the company on a typical day, generally you're going to be either in the motor pool or you're going to be wherever you store all of your equipment, such as your ISUs, your connexes, your, your just the buildings, wherever you keep all of your stuff. There's going to be a lot of, hey, let's find this piece of equipment. Let's see what the serial number is. Or, hey, let's grab all these pieces of equipment and bring them back to the company area. They have to be tagged and sent in for maintenance or something. Um, there's going to be a lot of that. And, you know, one th one interesting thing about, about units is that t a lot of times there'll be nothing going on during the daytime. Like maybe you're doing some police calling, maybe some cleaning, uh, cleaning up of the company area, but not much is going on. And at 1600, that's when you get word that, hey, uh, the vehicles need to be put online or hey we need to go find this piece of equipment that's in the very back of this full ISU or the, that was always one of the most annoying things just like nothing's going on all day we should just go home and be done and then at the last second they're trying to get us to go on these long hour-long missions oh my yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of that, a lot of just sitting and waiting, and then all of a sudden, hurry up and get this mission accomplished. That's just that's just part of what being in an army is about. Uh, there's gonna be yeah, essentially, you know, when it comes to cleaning and stuff, there's gonna be a lot of cleaning, buffing floors. There's gonna be a lot of shoveling snow. There's going to be mowing lawns. That's a big one. Mowing lawns. Lots of police calls. It's it's going to be a lot of that stuff. It's not, you know, it's not really, it's not, it's not fun. And it's like when you envisioned joining the army as a medic or as an IT or an NBC, you know, whatever MLS, did you really envision spending most of your days just doing a police call, mowing lawns, working on vehicles, doing online training. Not, not really. That's just kind of the reality of being in a, in a field type of unit. It's, yeah, it's not fun. But, you know, when you do go to the field, you know, it, you can get some good training when you actually go to the field. And that's, and that's the fun part. That is the fun part. And, you know, there is, sometimes you'll do some training, 
you know, during the week. Like I said, there's sergeant's time training on Thursdays usually, but sometimes you will get other training opportunities during the week also. It just depends on what the unit is doing and what's on the, what's on the schedule. Again, what's on the training schedule. Some units, uh, you know, are better about training than others. You know, or there's a lot of hip pocket training, just kind of like you're standing around doing nothing. So an NCO or someone, or, or a high speed specialist or corporal might just kind of have a class they can teach, just pick up a book or just teach a class on, on anything, really, just on anything. You know, another thing about being in a field unit is that if they give you opportunities to go to air assault school or to go to combatives, go. Sign up, you know, do that. I, that's a great opportunity to escape the daily grind and get some promotion points, too. You know, it's combatives. If you get a chance to go to combatives level one, I highly suggest it. That's a, that's a great class. It's so much fun. It really is. If you get a chance to do something like airborne, air assault, pathfinder, go for it. I mean, that that's always fun. I mean, just... You might not make it, but just give it your best, and you know, it's fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, being in field units, you usually have lots of time to get some of these courses accomplished, which is awesome. Again, I'm Kylie, just another Army vet. I hope you learned something from this video and at least got a taste of what life is like as an enlisted soldier in a field unit while in garrison. So if you did learn something, please, Drop that in the comments, share this video, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can get informed of new videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, signing out.